vader Maria aan Jozef verloof was, nog voor hulle getrouwd was, het het gebleid dat sy zwanger is. Die zwangerschap het van die heilige geest gekomen. Haar verloofde Jozef, wat aan die wet van Jozef getrouwd was, maar haar toch nie in die openbaar ons schande gemaakt, het om voorgeneem om die verloofing stilweg te verbreed. Terwijl hij dit in gedachte gehad het, het daar een engel van die Heere in een droom aan hom verskyn en gesê, Jozef, Seen van David, moet niet bang wees om met Maria te trouw nie, want wat in haar verwek is, kom van die Heilige Gees. Sy sal een Seen in die wereld bring, en jy moet om Jezus noem, want dit is hy wat sy volk van hulle sonde sal verlos. Dit het alles gebeur, so die woord wat die Heere dier sy profeet gesê het, vervul sal word. Die maagd sal swanger word, en een Seen in die wereld bring, en hulle sal hom Immanuel noem. Die naam beteken God by ons. Toe Jozef uit die slaap wakker word, het hy gemaakt soos die engel van die Heere hom beveel het en met haar getrouw. Die evangelie van die Heere. In 1940, almost part of the history, Ernest Hemingway completed his novel entitled For Whom the Bell Tolls. A favorite line from the book is this, how little we know of what there is to know. What do we know? Well, we know that the season of Advent anticipates the coming of Christ from three different views. Firstly, there is the physical nativity in Bethlehem. Secondly, there is the welcoming of Christ into the heart of the believer. And thirdly, that which we call the eschatological second coming, or as we prefer to call it, the end of time. We also know that Advent comes from the Latin word meaning coming. Jesus is coming. And Advent is meant to be a season of preparation for his arrival. The scripture reminds us, we do not know the day and we do not know the hour. So even though we see Advent as a joyous season, or as a time for unwinding after a very busy year, it is intended as a time of preparation, much like Lent. So St. Paul rounds us off perfectly for us this morning in his letter to the Romans when he says, as God's beloved children, we are all called to be saints. So let me summarize. For the most part, we are preparing for Christmas by hosting end of the year parties, yes? We are called to be saints 
who by definition submit to the will of God and yet the world is falling apart because the world that Christ came to save prefers its own way so we actually know quite a bit but we prefer to live contrary to what we know thank God God knows us God knows our weaknesses God knows our strengths God knows our potential and God knows our desire for something greater the desire for something greater in life is an inclination that we are all imbued with but what we very often confuse is that which we consider to be greater may not be ultimately better that 400 inch television may be greater but not necessarily better when we don't have the generator to power it the fully stocked fridge may be greater but not necessarily better when others are without so this is probably what you've all been anticipating maybe a good time now for me to introduce something else you probably all know and that is the famous poem by John Donne for whom the bell tolls no man is an island entire of itself each is a piece of the continent a part of the main if a clod be washed away by the sea Europe is the less as well as if a promontory were as well as if a manner of thine own or of thine friends were each man's death diminishes me for I am involved in mankind therefore send not to know for whom the bell tolls it tolls for thee in this poem John Donne puts forward the question of a person who hears a funeral bell and asks about the person who has died and the answer to the question is this because none of us stands alone in the world each human death affects us every funeral bell therefore tolls for thee as present as it was then so it is for us now Don draws our attention to the word loneliness he says that loneliness should be an impossibility because we are all connected whether it be in a familial or a relational way we all have families right we all have friends yes we all have neighbors but do we if this connectedness was upheld and protected what a different world it would be that we live in today unfortunately indifference makes us forget that connectedness and so the poem is meant to remind us that because of our interconnectedness every time someone passes on a part of us passes on too so the poem stresses that we cannot be disregarding of the lives of other people when God in his infinite wisdom sent his son into the world so that no one may be lost God showed his awesome love and his plan for humankind and that is the plan we come to partake in today God's plan to unite God's plan to reconcile and God's plan to restore so when one person is injured we are all injured when one continues to take there are others who cannot receive when selfishness abounds there is little left for the other but it's those last three lines of the poem that focuses our attention on what it means when a recent bereavement occurs each man diminishes me for I am involved in mankind therefore send not to know for whom the bell tolls it tolls for thee the image of a church bell symbolizes death when the rings he says to the listener when the bell rings don't ask for whom it rings say it rings for me this will be a constant reminder of the interconnectedness and so in our everyday lives we make choices 
to bring life or death to situations and events. You heard in the gospel this morning, Joseph, being a man of honor, wanted to spare Mary publicly. He had made up his mind to do this when the angel appeared to him to set the record straight. So like scripture, we continue building on that through literature to promote stories of good values and good morals in life. You all are familiar with Pinocchio, whose nose would grow every time he told a lie. Or the tortoise and the hare, where the moral is, never give up. Or the ants and the grasshopper, work hard and play hard, but always be prepared. Or the dog and the shadow, be happy with what you have, and you won't need to be greedy. The crow and the pitcher, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. The two crabs tell us how to lead by example, and the lion and the mouse, no act of kindness is ever wasted. So, my dear people, the bells that we will bless today and give thanks to God for will ring, yes, when there is a funeral. But more importantly, they're going to ring when there is a wedding, like we had yesterday. I was very excited to try them out. They will call people to prayer. They will ring out to let the town of Otswer know something greater is happening in the lives of others. So come and share the joy with me. They will ring out to proclaim what we already know, but we seem to have forgotten. God is good all of the time. They will invite all who can hear to share in the joy, to share in the hope and the promise of something greater. The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and informed her that her son will be called Emmanuel. God is with us. These are words we need to hear as our country suffers. Today, we celebrate the kindness of others. We celebrate the kindness of our benefactors, who have now become even more intimately connected with the Diocese of Boswin as we honor the memory of their parents. And we will continue to pray for each other but no longer as strangers, but as brothers and sisters in Christ. These bells, as they were intended to do 57 years ago, will once again remind our town and the surrounds that we are interconnected and that the bell tolls for you and for me. But perhaps let me leave it up to Aesop to fill you in and wrap this up. The mice once called a meeting to decide on a plan to free themselves from their enemy, the cat. At least they wished to find some way of knowing when that cat was coming so that they might actually have time to run away. Indeed, something had to be done for they lived in such constant fear of her the claws that they hardly dared stir from their dens by night and day. Many plans were discussed but none of them was thought good enough. At last, a very young little mouse stood up and said, I won't do the voice. I have a plan that seems very simple, but I know it will be successful. All we have to do is to hang a bell about the cat's neck. And when we hear the bell ringing, we will immediately know that the cat is coming. All the mice were much surprised they themselves had not thought of this plan before. But in the midst of their rejoicing, of their good fortune, the old mouse arose and said to them, I will say that the plan of the young mouse is indeed very good. But let me ask one question. Who will bell the cat?
faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. On this last Sunday of Advent, the Church always directs our attention to Mary, who by the power of the Holy Spirit conceived Jesus, the Son of God. May every member of the Church find in faith, courage, and tenderness of Mary and her husband Joseph, grace to welcome Jesus with complete trust. Lord, hear us. For the Pope, and his intention for the month of December, volunteer for non-profit organizations, that such charity may inspire many more to give abundantly of their time and resources. Lord, hear us. For this most glorious occasion, in which we share in the ancient practice of the ringing of bells, May the deal be an ever-constant reminder of the life of grace you call us to awaiting our happy end and hearing them once more in the life of the world to come. Lord, hear us. For the grace bestowed upon us in the presence of all esteemed members of your faithful in a special May our benefactors, who made it possible to share in this gift for our entire community of Utsuran, may you, Lord, bless them even as they bless us. Lord, hear us. For the sick, the dying, housebound, imprisoned, and material needs of people, Lord, we know you are God who provides that we surely may lack nothing. You are God with us, Emmanuel. Help us and make us more generous towards our brothers and sisters. Lord, hear us. Lord. May our relatives, friends, and parishioners who have died receive the fullness of God's grace and peace. Lord, hear us. Father, we celebrate the trust which Mary and Joseph placed in your will as they welcomed your Son into their lives. As Christmas approaches, grant to us that same grace through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who are holding to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith.
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and turn you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father,
forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the my room. But only say the word and my soul.
having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. May I ask you please to be seated for one minute. Just don't time, but it will be one minute, I'm sure. So even though Father Kewen acknowledged your presence here this morning at the beginning of our celebration, I too, on behalf of our diocese, would like to make a few special thank yous. And that's to Minister Murray Winger, coming from Cape Town to be with us. And a huge thank you to Gavin and Brendan Ryan. Words cannot begin to express our gratitude except to say, thank you, thank you. Just to prove our interconnectedness, Minister Wenger, Gavin and Brenda, Redden, belong to the same parish. You can meet each other afterwards. What I would like to do is to make mention of one very special person, one of our own, one who and I said, has lived up to that expectation of something greater. And so I'm going to ask her to stand. I don't know if anyone, everyone will get to see her. This is our very own architect, young Leanne Carlisle, who is part and parcel of making this a reality for us today. So Leanne, could you please stand so that everyone can see you. said it was a minute. Thank you. Bye bye, thank you, Bishop. For that, you may be order. For some odd reason, I think I don't want to be the MC anymore. Uh, can someone please take my job, please? Eh? Because I feel like going to ring the bells already now, eh? Because we are all excited and ready to go outside. So, dear friends in Christ, just for our convenience, so our little program outside will be very simple. So, we will first have the prayer of the blessing of the bells with the holy water and incensing. Then, we will have the cutting of the ribbon by the MEC. Uh, then, we will have the unveiling, you know, of the plague uh, by our benefactors, uh, the Brian the Ryan Brothers and the Ryan Foundation. And then the moment of moments, ne? the ding, 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 ne? the drum roll beats, ne? we will have the ringing of the bells. And then in thanksgiving to God, at the back of your pamphlet or your leaflet, you will see there's a hymn called Danke. And then we will sing that hymn. So we will stick around for a few more photos those that would like to take photos and then all of us are invited with the exception of the VIP members including myself ne? I'm also, uh, you are invited not to the coffee room but to the coffee bar so next to Bishop's Garage there's a coffee bar there please all the VIP members gather there for some snacks and the rest of us we will go to the hall just on the other side of the parking so friends, just after Bishop has given them the solemn blessing, I will ask that those that are in the middle section, you, the altar service will go before you, then yourselves, and then the clergy will follow. And those on the flanks, please use the doors on either side. And make your way around there. We don't want to have a traffic block there, ne? because I've been the traffic officer now the whole day. I'm tired. Ne? So please just try to have some space. There's also space on the outside of the gate. So the, the gates are open. Uh, please make use of that space also. So you can have a full view of the entire outside room. Let us stand now for the final blessing.
May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. So that you who now rejoice with devotion at our Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you forever. Let us go forth to bless the bell tower.
with you. Way to salvation. With silver trumpets, Moses summoned Israel to gather as your people. Now you are pleased that in the church, the sound of bells should summon your people to prayer. Service, may their voice direct our hearts toward you and prompt us to come gladly to this church, there to experience the presence of Christ, listen to your word, offer you our prayers, and both in joy and in sorrow be friends to one another. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. I now invite uh, the MEC um, to please come. Yes, exactly. Correct. On the count of, is it five? <laughs> Should I give a countdown? Five. Two, one. <laughs> go. Thank you, thank you, Minister. So now we ask the Ryan brothers to please come forward from the Ryan Foundation. Beautiful, beautiful indeed. Can we just uh, stand for a minute and just have a photo next to it? Can you please? Mr. Ryan? <laughs> He's too excited, eh? <laughs> Thank you very much. So now, dear friends, as I speak, Special token of our appreciation. We all know where we are. Ne? We are in outsourcing. Ne? And I want to give the word. Ne? And you cannot leave outsourcing without an ostrich egg. Ne? <laughs> so, dear friends, as a beautiful reminder, I then ask the brothers to come forward again and to accept this token of our appreciation from the Minis family. So they own the shop just across the road, Busman Curios, and um, they are saying, please use our egg well. Ne? Don't use it as a bell. Ne? So I ask Bishop now just to hand over. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I am done. My nerves are done now. So I am kaput. 
So dear friends in Christ, the moment of moments, the drum roll beat, ne? the austerity of the occasion, ne? the militia of, I don't know, I wanted to use another word now, the, 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 the age of, of everything, dear friends in Christ, the ringing of the bells. And we give a countdown, 10. It's a bit slow, hey? We'll get there. Let us have the recessional hymn now, or the bell hymn.
So dear friends, we give an opportunity now for some photos. You can have some photos with the bishop in front of the bell tower and also your own personal ones. And then in 10 minutes, we make our way over to, the, to our lovely lunch. Ne? Oh, I don't know, our spare ups. <laughs>